Bhagavad Gita is the dialogue between Lord Krishna and Arjuna that took place on the battlefields of Kurukshetra. In this episode, our speakers elaborate on the feminine aspect, both direct and indirect, as interpreted from the Bhagavad Gita. On first impression, one may tend to think that it is a male-dominated story about wars and its warriors. The Bhagavad Gita, right? It's a it's a war zone. And it's a warrior and an avatar having this conversation. It was recorded by a man. The narrator of the story is a man. It's it's all about a very masculine activity, warriorship, you could say. And I first read the Gita when I was about 15 and I remember thinking, oh my God, you know, this is meant to be spirituality and it's all about war and fighting and killing your relatives and all that stuff. It didn't make any sense to me in the beginning. It's after years of practice that I've started to understand its validity. And and remember too that the Bhagavad Gita is just one part of the whole story of the Mahabharata War. It's just the part where Arjun is floundering on the battlefield. He's, you know, Krishna has put the five Pandava brothers in the forefront to fight this war against the Kauravas. The Kauravas have chosen all the weapons of war. The Pandavas have chosen Lord Krishna. And so suddenly here Arjun is, he's meant to lead his brothers into battle with the small troops that they have, and he's terrified and also very, very worried. He's worried because he's got to fight his relatives. His enemies are his relatives. His guru, his guru Drona is there. And so he suddenly got this incredibly important ethical dilemma. What do I do now? Also remember that this is an allegory, a symbol for our inner state. The so-called goodies and baddies right and wrong, the dualities of existence are within us. It's the divine within us, Lord Krishna, and it's the human acting person within us, Arjun, which is there whether you're male or female. And they're having this dialogue about how to how to proceed in the world. The Gita cannot be taken literally. If you take it literally, then you'll say there are no women characters, you'll say there is a war, Is it encouraging? So that's not how. Everything in India has symbols, symbolism, metaphors, and it's up to us to look at the interpretation and learn it. for instance is what I often wear and see what it has on its palu. It has the scene from the Bhagavad Gita. The horses, the chariot, Krishna as the charioteer, Arjuna as the uh, person listening to the wisdom of the self. You know the four horses that drag the chariot of the Bhagavad Gita stand for our five senses. And people ask, why five senses and four horses? Because eyes, ears, taste, touch, and smell are our five senses. Because one of our senses, our tongue, actually can taste and touch. So in infinite wisdom, the chariot of the Bhagavad Gita has only four senses. And we need to control them. These four senses as the horses drag us on the journey from birth to death. And they go in whichever road they want to go. Desires are the roads they travel by. It is up to us to use the reins, which is really a symbol of our mind, and spend time meditating and doing yogic practices so that we have a centering practice to keep us in this busy world. The charioteer is our intellect or our 
mind, which helps us. The intellect helps us, guides us in judgment and decision making, as Krishna did in the Bhagavad Gita. And who are we? We are not the chariot. The chariot is our body. Who are we? We are the self, the Lord inside the chariot, happily going for the ride. And there's no need for us to get sorrowful or depressed or angry or fearful because that's not our real nature at all. And I just love this beautiful metaphor of the chariot and I often use it in meditation. about women in the Gita but we're talking about feminine qualities and and maybe that's something that many many viewers who are Indian or who know the Gita are already familiar with um, you know the phrase from I think chapter 10 verse 34 where it says Kirti Shri Vakchanari Naam Smitir Medha Dritikshama these are the feminine qualities Kirti is fame Shri is beauty, perfect speech, memory, intelligence, loyalty, and forgiveness. They call these seven um, values as feminine qualities in the Gita. So this is applicable to all human beings, right? We can pick up these feminine qualities and develop them among ourselves. So when we say Shri, when, when the words in the Gita talk about Shri as a feminine quality, Shri means beauty. It's not just the beauty outside, which is fine. We should still be putting our little makeup and looking beautiful outside. But it's about the inner radiance. And that's why we have a bindi in India, right? We put on the dot to remember, what am I doing about my inner beauty? Because that's the spot for the third eye to look within. These two eyes look at the world. What am I going to look at within? What am I going to do about developing my inner beauty or radiance? that helps me be a solution for so many people's lives. And I could be making tons of profit while doing it. Absolutely fine. You can enjoy the material world, but do it with calmness and inner beauty. <laughs> 